To, to make a call to action and to share uh, some of the um, points that we've been discussing for over half a year. Um, Szechuan is doing a research very similar to my own. Uh, the geographical uh, point of Europe is different, is studying the backpipes from the border between Scotland and England, which have not be uh, that much um, research until now. Of course, there is a, a great wealth of, of material evidence is there, and in Sweden, not so much. So when Szechuan started his PhD, we started to understand that our PhDs are very alike, and we as researchers are very alike because we are both trained in design. So, um, we wished that uh, the data was already there, treated, and that we could make use of it. But that's not the case. So, and probably the job won't be done by the end of our doctoral researches. But it's also our duty to push forward uh, this topic so that the next researchers encounter the field of research much more organized. So, the intentions of this call to action, which again, not a real presentation, we're not teaching anything, we are actually provoking a discussion. Uh, the objectives of this presentation are, of course, further discussion brainstorming, promote a vision for the future, and my computer is closed. Yes? The problem is that, unfortunately, for this call to action, the people won't be able to follow it at home. But I think it's preferable that me and Szechuan continue and then we take a very small break and we take care of that for the round table that perhaps will actually interest people at home more than actually this scope project. So, uh, the objectives are to further discussion, to promote a vision for the future and to actually de develop a mind map or a strategy and you can imagine as designers we like to see the big picture. Um, and especially ask for your engagement and your support. Um, we discussed, Szechuan, um, a possible way or technology of uh, organizing the data. So, we um, had to think about to do a, like, a wiki-like uh, structure for, like, for all, all the data, all the knowledge we want to share with. So this will include like iconography and manuscript, like the, the first-hand um, materials, and also like the modern research, like people publish online or something are like uh, never get digitalized. We can scan them to bring them together, as well as next one and like uh, 20th century media, like as a lot of things have been played today on like. And so 1930s like recordings of old, the last paper, last paper from timing, and as well as like photographies. It can be like 19th century thing. Like uh, there are a few photos of um, border pipers holding the pipes from the 1840s, 1850s. The final thing and um, will be more interesting to make us as the technique drawings, if they are being shared. So people will learn to mix them and improve them bit by bit. So um, we're getting to the second part of the sh shared um, database is the repertoire. So before starting uh, talking about like what we want to do, I want to share a story of Doris uh, Ruggles Breed, who visited uh, Charles Macintosh in 1909. And he, um, he found a very interesting old book, um, Tune Collection, and um, it's a manuscript. And uh, he asked Ch uh, Charles like, if he can buy that from him. And he said, like, um, no, I, I won't like, rub you for, for that. And then Charles threw that into fire. And she saved the book out from the fire, 
and uh, put down the notes and everything, and then nine notes and possibly a bagpipe manuscript. And uh, almost a century later, in the 1990s, uh, people refound that and named it as the William Dixon manuscript as the earliest dated uh, bagpipe um, music collection in Britain. Yeah. So, when we lack a physical evidence like here in Finland, how can we make sure that it's really a bagpipe tune? Um, so there should have there should be some kind of standardization of data collection and data analysis in order for it to be comparable. Right? It would allow for cross comparison. Uh, we could then look for patterns, and we could especially, which is especially interesting for me, and we have been discussing this that this morning, find missing puzzle pieces outside our regions. And the question is. Will this, because it's a very trendy subject nowadays, does that involve some kind of uh, um, AI? How, because sometimes we may be talking about massive sets of data. And it's a rather simple idea. It's like you set the range of a few notes, and a few notes can only be played. No sharps, no, no flats for particular, particular tunes, and then maybe you have like a significant drum going on. For the music, it's reasonably easy to get AI to learn that. So that's why we talk about it. Uh, for the layman, this might seem completely absurd. For a pianist, for someone in classical music. For pipers, this is the bread and butter. Bagpipes have certain feature, features uh, that might, let's say, create a DNA in repertoire. I've, I've, I've discussed this with several musicians. I'm looking at Ilka, that there's a completely different instrument. And he said, yes, it's the same in my instrument. So, museum protocols. So, we had a very interesting um, morning session. And I loved... Uh, it, it was premeditated, but I'm, I'm so glad that it worked so well. The order of the participations. So, I wanted to, to end with Simon. Because there was some controversy there, and it had also, also a beautiful uh, link to the round table. So I wanted him to be the, the last one. So, museum protocols. We have had different, a set of, you know, a, a variety of experiences, good and bad, with museums. So, maybe we should define respect and understand roles. Uh, should there be special protocols for woodwinds in museums? Maybe Ilka will say, well, there should be special protocols for yohikos and stringed instruments. For us, we know about woodwinds, so we kind of feel that there should be, there should be special be. protocols for woodwinds. A little warmer, a little bit of moisture. Yes. They are not African uh, masks, they are uh, musical instruments. Um, use it or lose it. You know, this is, this is a, a catch, catchphrase for neurons that says that uh, as people go, get older, they should use the neurons, and the ones they don't use, they lose them. So, maybe that's the same with bagpipes, and that's maybe the same with instruments. Use them or lose them. As Simon mentioned with bait collection, like, say, preserve better than the other collection, this is why, like, use it or lose it. Should, should, is this naive to want to some, somehow unify protocols around uh, across Europe? Uh, and that's why the question mark is there. Beyond Europe, as and beyond Europe. there are a lot of collections, not only in Europe. There's like fantastic collection in Japan. The States has a lot of interesting things as well. And because we love bagpipes, we of course push for bagpipes, but Bagpipes may very well open the door for any other kind of instrument, especially folk instruments. So, um, as, I, as I said, we have different perspectives. And actually, uh, Szechuan is a bit of an insider, and we will talk a little bit more during the, the, the round uh, table discussion. So, um, as insider means, I did an internship in Edinburgh and with the Statistical Hall, 
as a music instrument conservation and internship, what I did is basically train how to handle the instrument in the collection better and document them and making 3D models and print them out and also the technique drawings. So from that um, view, like what I understand and what I also measure in the instrument and in the process is like, um, so yeah, the first thing is keep the instrument safe. You don't want to destroy, you don't want to leave any scratch to the instrument as the good practice. The second thing is like, keep it reasonable objective, the objectivities. Like, uh, mm -hmm. measurements are always subjective. Uh, and uh, e different methods, different tools, different people, different mode when you uh, measure the instrument will be different. <coughs> so try your best to remain get objective. Remain objective. Yeah. And then, then the third thing is like, if we can find a more standardized way using uh, the same method to measure the same thing, even if it's not good enough, but it will be like unified in, um, in the data. So for example, if you're using like a metal rod, or if you use like a very springy box of the rod in, in there, the data will be different. But like if we keep every all the data the same, we can ca calibrate the system error at the end. And no matter who uses the system, the system error should be very similar compared to like this using is, different methods. This is a very much a designer oriented uh, mindset. There is a there is a, a definite difference between precision and rigor. We are trying to be rigorous. Precision uh, depends how much precision I need, because otherwise we go to zero point zero 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 zero, and as we know, it's a it's a mathematical abstraction. So we have to stop at a certain point of precision. But when we establish what is the precision, then we must be rigorous. And I don't know if this is very clear for us. It's extremely clear because again, that's the bread and butter of 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 design. And then we got, uh, uh, as we talk about, like, if we got a standard method, can we have a standard toolkit, a standard measurement kit for everyone? So if everyone brings in um, a set of tools, the curator, the conservator, will think it is safe, and you can get reasonable, reliable data from your measuring, and it is fast enough to get through the instrument, because some museums only will give you like one hour, one hour window to measure the instrument. If you need to like change disks for your measure bit and do everything manually, it might take a, a whole afternoon just to measure like, for example, like 200 millimeters of the throw, from the throw to the middle of the charter. So if we can get something ready-made and easy to bring, that will be much better um, experience for the measuring um, people and also the, from the museum side. Yeah. Uh, we will talk more about that and talk yeah. about training people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but training informing training. people how to, how to, how do to it. use them. And it's like we said, like we got a method, we got tools, so we need to train people how to use them. That's why we put that here. And they need not be absolute experts. They just have to understand what they are doing and why they are doing it. And again, drawings. Drawings. So, uh, if uh, from the drawings, like you can save a lot of data, which are not critical to the acoustic side, but it can be like um, how well you present the instrument. Like some decoration won't be available from Baroque time, like it won't be a Mosset decoration from there. If you save that, you save still a critical data, but it's not acoustically critical. So it's kind of the balance like, uh, what's your, what's the most important data? For example, like the ball size, the angle of the holes, the extra diameter around the finger holes. So once you cover everything acoustically critical, what's next? 
So this is kind of thing like we want to discuss, like, because you never will get enough data to measure something, to document something. So trying to get something at the first place will be quite important to think of, really. Yeah. 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 And again, biased drawings communicate uh, much faster and many times much more than text and words. Uh, we just, um, in a broader sense, people haven't uh, and haven't been educated like that. Drawing, drawings, the, the ability to draw or to communicate with visual aids, let's call it that way, is a form of communication, just like math, Finnish or music. And we are liking that. Uh, people say, well, I don't know how to draw. Everyone knows how to draw and everyone knows how to sing. So, uh, second story of the day. That's me with a strange hat. It's both funny and profound. So, uh, for two years I was invited by a, a medieval reenactment band to play bagpipes in their project. So that this is a 10 day um, reenactment. So I go, I dress like that for 10 days. And then you have a number of performances during the day and then you have free time. And uh, the picture, I don't know if you can really see it. But yeah. Uh, so the, the it's, they, we, we are uh, extremely handsome, but they can maybe see us less and more if it's possible uh, the picture. So, another person there was this gentleman, which was reenacting, doing a reenactment of a carpenter and so on. And he actually brought uh, a replica, let's say, of a medieval lathe. So here I was, talking to a guy that was explaining how, the, how presumably, a primitive lathe would work with that rope, making the piece go in one direction and the next on the other, and so on. And I couldn't try it. So that was uh, a, a privilege to have that insight. So it makes us things think about what networks are. Um, a call to action would be, okay, let's establish networks, let's establish institutional cooperation, that's what we are doing, actually. Uh, stronger links between backpack researchers. Um, build academic bridges beyond established thinking. Designers doing doctorals in music and so on. Search for the knowledge with whomever it may be. That's, that is very important. And here's a last story for the day. Um, a good friend of um, both me and Simon, Graham Wells, when he did his PhD, he did a field trip to Northumberland and uh, he ringed a shepherd saying like, I want to see your rope to read small pipes. And when he arrived to uh, arrive the farm, that shepherd did, wasn't there, and he was so disappointed um, that like, a shepherd from the next farm walked to him and said, Hey, why are you here? And he tells the story, he's coming to see a set of pipe made in early 19th century. And the shepherd said, like, Oh, I have the same thing. Do you want to see it? So it's all everything unexpected. But, and he found another unknown set of pipe from the same maker. Yeah. So, in conclusion, Promote the centralizing of knowledge. Wiki. Even if, uh, this, well, this is all food for thought, you know. Discuss uh, unified protocols for communicating and collaborating. Discuss um, the lack, the, the eventually current lack of trust um, in the results. We, we discussed that yesterday bring credibility to backpack research, which is definitely what we are doing today. And that's it. So, more important than our presentation would really would be to hear from you guys. So we do welcome, not even, if it's not questions, just outbursts, uh, ideas, 
um, there's a need to be questions because we probably won't have the answer anyways. So, thank you. Cheers.
uh, when I think of my Stone Age instruments I presented to you, which are studied uh, really in the Stone Age way. <laughs> um, what you call basic knowledge, uh, the knowledge about the instruments I showed to you, uh, which is circulating among enthusiasts, among private researchers, and sometimes very rigorous, uh, well-informed uh, enthusiasts. It's maybe 90, uh, uh, it's maybe 10 times more than uh, what has been published uh, for the last decades in, uh, in some articles. The sources, uh, the, the audio sources, video sources, iconography, written sources, it is all around uh, circulating, uh, circulating in a very productive way and we have to think very serious uh, to find systematic uh, methods, frameworks to uh, make it accessible because as far as I know, uh, there's uh, this ethos uh, of sharing knowledge is very widespread. At the other hand, I think uh, it's a very private decision. If a researcher of a maker will share that uh, material, and we have also respect this. If you uh, work for the gates and they have not managed to publish uh, something, uh, it is your uh, decision what you to share and what not. To leaving the uh, sketches in the uh, measurements uh, in the museum is really great and it really close uh, to the idea of uh, ethnomusicology of giving back the data. This is very, uh, very accurate. So um, this is just very, very general. No, it's very interesting. Uh, personally, I have. Yeah, I have, I have a huge difficulty in, in seeing it in any other way. I've been there, I felt that like that for many years. Uh, it doesn't make you sleep better. So once you start uh, not caring, uh, in a good way, not caring, in order to care, not, not, not uh, letting go, because the, and I'm pointing at him, um, the return is tenfold. When you share this to someone, the return is thankful. And when people understand that, then it's... So, this conversation is not restricted to bagpipes. Any other question or shall, shall we uh, move on? We have five more minutes in terms of scheduling, but we can move on. We actually need the five minutes to reconnect to Zoom, so maybe we should do that. It's all good now. It's all working. Really? Yeah. So, hi to everyone at home. There was a, um, well, I would say a shared mistake uh, on our part and the technical stuff. And uh, now it's all working. So, does that mean that we go and sit there and continue? I think it's a good idea. Yes. <laughs> sit down. <laughs> so, I, I have to, if, if you've been in the morning session, which I believe